Ghost Game Part B. You want to open the last version of your Click the Ghost Game. And then you can also change in the top here if you want to make it 8B. No, and then change the date if you need to. And you're going to add code to your game so that there is a way to win and lose. First, you will add a global variable for the number of ghosts. I will use the default value of 20 ghosts. You can modify this number to what you want. So in my version of the game, the player will have 20 random ghosts pop up and then the game will end. You can decide how many ghosts you want to pop up before the game ends. We're going to make this a global variable so we come to this section near the top and I'm going to call my variable numGhosts. Okay, and be careful of your capitalization and spelling. And once again, I'm going to set mine to be 20. Now add a line of code in the wait function so that you decrement or decrease by one the value of ghosts every time a new ghost pops up. You've been used to incrementing or adding one. This time we're actually going to be subtracting one. So I'm going to come here to my wait function. And since I'm changing the value of numGhosts, I need to make it global. So make sure that you spell it correctly. And then I'm going to come in here where I've got the new value for old time, my new x and y. And I want to decrement my numGhost. This means that I that one ghost has popped up and I'm going to be decreasing until I get to none. So numGhost, and instead of a plus equals, I'm going to do a minus equals one. So this is how I decrement. You can run your code and make sure that you don't have any errors. Okay. Right now your draw function has two possibilities. Let's take a look. We have the if true, which is my intro, and the false, which is showing the ghost. We need it to have three possibilities, the intro, the ghost, and the game ending. We need a variable that has more than two possible values. Intro has two possible values, true and false. So true and false isn't good enough. We will use an integer variable instead because integers can have many different values and we will call it status. So change your variable, your intro variable, to status at the top where you defined it. Let's come up here to the top. And instead of the word intro, I'm going to change it to status. The first status is going to be 1. So I'm going to change the value from true to 1. Now I also need to change it in start game. So everywhere that I'm using intro, I'm going to change it to status. So right here, instead of global intro and start game, I'm going to put status. And I'm going to change the status instead of false. Let's make it two. Now we're going to need to modify our draw so that I have all three chances. I'm going to come down here to my draw function. Instead of intro, I'm going to say status equals equals one. And there's my intro. Instead of else here, I'm going to have elif status equals equals two and that's going to be my ghosts now i also need to make status global in here just so we don't have any errors so i'm going to go ahead and type that up here because i am going to change the value right in here so after i've drawn the ghosts, i want to check to see if i have any ghosts left once i have zero ghosts i want the ending so if num ghosts is less than one I'm going to change my status to 3, and I'm ready for the ending. I'm going to back all the way up, and I'm going to have my else. And make sure that your indenting for else is equal to all these other ones right here. Now I'm going to just display my message for the game if they won or if they lost. So you can copy the code that's going to be shown on your screen, and then turn back on the video. Now run your game. You shouldn't have any errors. And you should notice that the ghosts click and that you have a win or a lose.
The final thing you can do is actually have a start over game, a start over button, or a new game. You can add some code to your program for your new game button. It's going to look like this. You're basically going to take all of your global variables. You can see that you have your status, your x, your y, old time count. You're going to take all of your global variables and basically just reset them. So I can take this and I'm going to just put them in here and just indent correctly and then make all of them global. So when I start a new game, I take all of my variables and I reset them as if it was the beginning. And I have to make them all global. So I've got three of them right here. I need to make all of them global. So the status count and num goes, let's make global x, global y, global old time, and Split and num ghosts. I already got that one. So I've got my new game function and I just reset all of my global variables. Then I want to add a button. So you can determine where you want to add the button. Do you want it on top of your start game or after your start game? So I'm going to put mine right here. So I'll put frame.add button and the button will say new game and I will link it to new game. Be careful with your spelling. And now when I run it, I have the new game button, the start game button. If I click on new game, everything should start over again and there I am. So you can do some final testing of your program, run your code, everything should work perfectly to this point. Make any other changes that you want to make. So you can change the number of ghosts. If you want more than 15, you would change the number right here. And also make sure that you change it in your intro. Um, if you want to change the time, then you're going to change it in your wait. Okay. So make any changes that you want and you are finished. Uh, Make sure that you put your URL in your document that you and that you fill out your exit ticket. Share your game with others and enjoy.